guys, it's Joshua Reviews. Okay, so, um, I think it was almost two years ago, I watched Night of the Demons 2, and I gotta say, it was a wacky, dumb good time. I remember fondly about it. I, I remember enjoying it, and I remember enjoying the first one as well. It's been a while since I've seen the first Night of the Demons, but nonetheless, I've been meaning to rewatch it, but I figured, hey, let's just get the two last films in the series out of the way for this Halloween month. And since Halloween month is actually, or Halloween is coming up pretty close, I, I'm going to release these two videos the same day. So you're going to get the review for Night of the Demons 3, and then you're going to get the remake later today as well. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, Night of the Demons 3. So I couldn't find this movie anywhere. I'm not spending 50 bucks on a DVD, and I don't have the money right now to afford the Blu-ray. So I was kind of caught in a pickle here because it wasn't on any streaming service. So what is one to do? Um pirated website of course so i watched this film in 780p and oh boy so people said this is the weakest out of the trilogy uh not you know like trilogy uh excluding the remake which would be the fourth in the series but nonetheless i was optimistic most of the time i tend to have unpopular opinions i mean after all i am the person who loves Ozark Sharks and despises Sharknado for some reason. Because you think that'd be the type of film series I'd enjoy, but no. So I went into this very optimistic um, because a lot of people said it was really bad. And it was a downgrade in quality. And the intro right away, right out the gate, yeah, it was apparent that this is going to be a low-tier movie. Like, I knew this movie wasn't going to be on par with the original and the sequel because the sequel you know for all its faults it still felt like a direct continuation of the first movie this one does not feel like that this one feels like they just had a horror movie idea that took place on a haunted house during halloween and they're like hey let's just you know add angela in here which is well, add angela in there which is the main villain for these movies uh the main demon that possesses uh the main demon that possesses this girl named Angela, and she's like kind of the main character. She's kind of like the icon of the Night of the Demon series. So it was like, hey, let's just throw Angela in there and let's just call it Night of the Demons 3. Because I think the title card says Demon House. So I don't know. I don't know what, what went down with the production or behind the scenes in the film. It's really weird. I don't have the time or patience to do any research, but nonetheless... Right at the gate, I was, I was skeptical. The, uh, as soon as this movie started, I was like, oh God, this, is, this really is going to be bad. But surprisingly, the first 30 minutes were really, really good. I got to say, I don't know what was happening. The movie is nothing original, but the concept that they were in the story they were telling was really unique in the approach I, I really liked. So it's this group of friends in a van and they're going to some Halloween party or some shit. And they bump into these two girls who are hitchhiking for like a ride to get somewhere. And they're like, hey, let's go to the Halloween party. They stop at a gas station and the, ga and the gas station clerk is being a real jerk. Like I'm talking like a big jerk. Like the guy uh, hands over his, you know, ID and he says, oh, you don't look, you know, this is a fake ID. And he's like, no, it's my real ID. And he pulls a shotgun on them when he refuses to leave. And the one guy in their group takes a shotgun and basically shoots up the place when cops show up. And one cop gets shot. He survives, but they think he died. So they make a run for it in their van and they drive to the house that was from the first and second movie. And they have to survive Angela while also avoiding the cops. And I was like, this is a really solid concept because they have... They have a reason to stay hidden in the house. They have a reason for being in there. And when stuff starts happening, it doesn't happen right away. So, and, and, they're, and they're split up from each other. So 
there's a lot of tension building, there's a lot of suspense, and you get a feel for every character. I felt bad for at least one or two, or maybe even, I, I forget the names, but I, I know for a fact I like three of the main characters, that being the main chick, and uh, kind of the love interest she has with this guy, and the guy who got shot. Uh, you, really, you really feel bad for them for being in this situation, and I like the fact that the movie took its time to kind of get to know these characters, and the acting was not good, and the writing's not good. Oh boy, it's not good. I'll get to that later. But I was having a good time, and I was thinking to myself, this is pretty enjoyable so far, I gotta say. Um, the one thing I will say right off the bat, though, is that the house is not the same, and inside the house, it looks like a a normal house. One, one of the things that people love, including myself, love about the first two films is that the house has this really creepy, dark, abandoned atmosphere. It looks creepy, it looks worn down, it looks really haunting and sinister. The house in this, I wasn't, it didn't give me that impression. It looked like someone had been living in there. And they explained that, yeah, Angela has been living in there, but it's been a while since I've seen the second one. Didn't they kill her off? I forgot at the end of that movie on a cliffhanger. I don't know, I gotta rewatch it, like I said, but. Then, about 30, 40 minutes in, the film takes a nosedive in quality. Not a lot happens. And the likable characters that you want to see make it out start to make really dumb decisions. And I don't mind characters you like making dumb decisions. Plenty of films I like have characters you like making dumb decisions. But the characters when they make these dumb decisions, become extremely obnoxious. And, you know, I know a lot of people say that about the, the latest Halloween movie, Halloween Kills, how the characters make dumb decisions and they're obnoxious, but I never found those characters obnoxious. Uh, to me, I understood the message that movie was trying to convey about how fear and paranoia creates a lynch mob and how basically it drives you insane. I understood why it was happening. In this film, the characters make stupid decisions, and for some reason, they just become obnoxious for no reason other than to drive the plot forward. There's a guy with a shotgun and his girlfriend, and he's the guy who shot up the gas station. He was he was a jerk, and I wanted to see him die, but he, like, is around in the entire film. And, you know, it's cool because it's like, oh, cool, you know, another threat mixed in with the demons. Now, nah, he's, he's not fun to watch, and... I, unfortunately, this movie started off strong and it just went down a nosedive. I don't like I don't know what happened. It was like we were on we were like going on a water slide, right? And it was it was really it, the water slide's fun at first, but then the more you go down, it becomes longer and longer, and eventually you realize the water in the water slide is no longer water; it's piss. And then you get to the you finally reach the bottom of this water slide and you land in. A pool of shit because the film becomes really shit in its last act and this movie went from like a solid B to a C to a D plus and yeah this movie it's got bad acting it's it, it had a cool story and concept but it just lost me in the end uh, characters making dumb decisions Surprisingly enough, even for the budget, the demons aren't really in this film. I don't get it. Like, they did something interesting where a guy has a, you know, a mask, a demon mask, and the mask transforms him into this demon, but the makeup does not do it justice, and the acting and delivery, it's not scary. Because the first one, it's cheesy, but there are some genuinely terrifying moments because it's so claustrophobic. I didn't feel claustrophobic in this house once. Um... And something I want to mention before I give my final rating, even though you probably know it, this is my biggest issue with the film. They go to the house and the gates are open. And they explain that once you go through the gates, the demons can't come out. They can only stay in, in like the house garden area or whatnot. Like the, like the, they can only stay in the house. And the gates open the entire time. You see, in the first, and I believe second film, because I gotta rewatch it, but the, I know for a fact in the first movie, they tried to leave through the gates, but they were locked, so they had to climb over the barbed wire fence. 
and they got really scraped up and badly injured, but they barely made it out. In this one, the gate's just wide open for anyone to go through. And for some reason, they don't go through it. They know for a fact that this is the exit. I can just leave. I can just go. I can escape. And they don't escape. They just stay in the house the entire time. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Those are the types of dumb decisions I really get pissed about. Those those things, I, and it's not like one moment. Like, they do it countless moments. They're like, we're surrounded by the demons. It's like, okay, well, a minute ago, you just pushed through the demons. Push through them now. Use the shotgun that you have. It won't kill them, but it'll buy you some time to run and make your way towards the gate. It's stupid. This movie lost me in the second half. And in the third half, it just kind of sealed the fate that this was not a good sequel. Which is unfortunate because it started off strong. And it just got worse from there. I'm going to give it a D plus. It's got some cool moments in it. I like, I like the first 30 minutes. But, nah, just not my thing.